Hey, Right Riders, Keith Wheeler here back with another video for you. And if you're watching this video, then chances are you have a desire to write children's books. So today I'm going to talk about the top 10 mistakes that children's books authors make. Let's get started. Number 10, they write for themselves, not for their audience. Look, if you have passion and you have a book in your heart and in your mind that you want to write and get out there, well, then more power to you. If you just want to be a published author, a children's author, then great, more power to you. But if you actually want to make money doing this, then you need to make sure that there's actually a need for your type of book in the marketplace. Well, how do you do that? Well, with keyword research, you need to go to Amazon and other platforms that you plan on selling on and see if there's really a need for this type of book. And the way to tell is to see, number one, if there are other books similar to this in that particular niche that are selling, meaning they have a BSR or bestseller rank of 100,000 or less. And the second thing that you need to do is make sure that there's not a huge competition. So at the very top, when you do a search on Amazon, there'll be a little thing that says one through 16 of 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 50,000, whatever. That last number, that 50,000 or whatever it is, that's your competition. If that number is too high, if that number is more than 5,000, then it's going to be really hard for you to get really a, a significant amount of sales. So again, make sure you're writing for your audience, not for yourself. Number nine, they don't know their target audience. If you're writing a children's book, the children that you're writing it for, what gender are they? What age are they? Those are the kind of things that you need to know to really be able to create a book that children are engaged in, that children feel invested in. If you're just writing a book that's for all kids or everyone, it's really for no one. So you need to make sure that your book speaks to that particular reader, to that particular child, depending on the age group. And how do you do that? You have to know who they are. Again, their age range, the gender, super important. Number eight, their main character isn't relatable to their target audience. This goes a little bit back to what we were talking about in number nine. If you don't know the gender of your target audience, then how can you create a great main character? Because most children, whether they're four or five, all the way up through high school, they relate more to a main character that's the same gender as them, someone that they can relate to. So they want to be the same gender and you want them to be around the same age, if not a little bit younger than the character in the book. You definitely don't want your main character to be younger than your audience because a child that's six or seven has no relatability to, to a character who's four or five. So again, you want your main character to be the same gender and age range of your target audience. Number seven, they try to rewrite Dr. Seuss or other familiar books. Look, Dr. Seuss is a, a name that everybody is familiar with. Y you can't compete with them. So don't try. There are so many other amazing books and authors out there that you don't need to try to compete with Dr. Seuss. Create something that fits you as an author because that's what's going to make you stand out in the marketplace. Don't try to recreate some great epic book because even if yours is better, if it's too similar, their number of reviews is going to be way more than yours. And so it's going to be hard to, to show up in the algorithm. So again, don't try to compete with Dr. Seuss or, or other big names. There's so many other spots within your niche that is perfect for you. Number six, they don't create enough buzz about their book. Everybody talks about, you know, wanting to, to promote and market their book, you know, once it's launched, you know, get that buzz going. But the best time to get that buzz going is when you're writing it. As soon as you start writing a book, or as soon as you have an idea for a children's book or any other type of book, you need to share that. Share it with the world, whoever you can, whether it's on social media, word of mouth, it doesn't matter. Get that buzz going ahead of time because people get a vested interest as they hear new updates and, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, you're going to do that in the book? Oh, let me show you a cover of my book. Maybe let your followers vote on a particular cover, you know, put two or three up there and have them vote on which cover they like the best. All of these are great ways to get buzz and to get your future customers already engaged and already have a vested interest in you as an author and in that book. Number five, they're too lenient or too strict with the illustrations. I, I know you love this book and, and it's your passion and, and you put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into it. And that's great. That passion is definitely going to help you. But you need to also understand that another part of the artistic process is your illustrators. And because illustrators are such an integral part of a children's picture book, 
you need to make sure that you give them at least a little bit of wiggle room so that way they can you know, show their own creativity. But that said, I've seen authors just give their illustrators, you know, full reign and just say, hey, I don't care, draw me some pictures. Well, then you can't get upset if what they send you back is not what you're expecting because you didn't give them any guidance. You need to make sure that you know what illustrations you're interested in, you know, maybe what, what type. It's great if you can provide the illustrator with um, some examples that you've seen on other books, maybe, so they know, you know, do you want it to be more realistic? Do you want it to be more cartoony? Like, what are you looking for? What type of color scheme do you want to go? All those things need to be explained to your illustrator before they even get started. Because one, you need to make sure that, that illustrator can do that. You know, a lot of illustrators specialize in certain types of illustrations. Many of them can't do everything. So again, you don't want to be too strict, but you also don't want to be too lenient with the instructions that you give your illustrator. Number four, they don't get their books edited. Look, I know this is a children's book. And a lot of people think that, oh, children's books are easy to write because there's less words in them. But it's actually the opposite is true. Because there are so few words in a children's picture book, the words that you do use are that much more impactful. So you need to make sure that the words that are chosen are spot on. They, they get the mood across without being too wordy. They're not necessarily too babied down for the age group, but they're also not too, you know, over the top. All of that can be helped with a really good book editor. So don't only self edit your book. Make sure that you get a children's book editor. Number three, they don't get beta readers. I know a lot of people know that beta readers are really helpful when it comes to, to novels and nonfiction books, but I've seen so many authors forget to get beta readers for their picture books. Beta readers for picture books are just as important as for a young adult novel, if not more, because not only can they help find the few little editing things that might've slipped through, or maybe they have a comment about the illustrations or the cover or whatever, but they're also an amazing source of early book reviews. And especially in such a competitive niche as children's picture books, every book review you can get will better your chances of getting future sales. Number two, they publish and pray. You know, the days of publishing and pray where you just publish your book and, and just pray that sales come, those days are over. You know, back in 2014, 2015, it was very, very possible to publish a children's picture book put it up on the marketplace and just watch your sales come in. But nowadays, so many people are publishing books and, and children's picture books in particular, that it's very hard for your book to be seen right out of the gate without doing marketing promotion. And I'm not talking about you having to spend thousands of dollars, but if you don't do any marketing and promotion for your books, it's going to be hard for that book to be seen above the noise. You know, it, it's like in an ocean of children's picture books, it's hard for that one book to, to really shine. So early on, marketing and promotion is paramount. So if you've liked those first nine tips that I've given you, then make sure you give that thumbs up a smashy smashy. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification so you get alerted every time I put out videos just like this one. And why not share it with the world? Let other children's book authors know what they want to avoid. Now let's get to the number one mistake that children's book authors make. They don't keep writing books. Do you think we know who Dr. Seuss was or Judy Bloom or R.L. Stein or any of those other authors if they only wrote one book? No, you, you want to make sure that you have a backlog of books so that way when someone does find your book and they love it because you're such a great author that they'll go in and they'll check out your next one and your next one and your next one. If you only have one book and, and then you don't write any more, then they're, you know, they're going to be one and done. They're going to read your book and be done with it. The best way to get repeat customers is to have more books for them to read. But now that we've gone through that, don't let the learning stop here. I did a video a while back about how to get an illustrator on Fiverr for your children's picture book. It's right there. Go check it out. So many people watch it and give me great positive comments. Now, if you've already seen that, or maybe you're not that interested in it, maybe you already have your illustrations or whatever. Well, then YouTube says this video right here is perfect for you. I'll catch you in one of these videos and remember to write right.